Hatsune Miku is a character ingrained in internet culture. Chances are if you like anime at all or have been online since 2007, you've probably seen her at least once. I know she's had a big impact on me since I've been in the Vocally fandom for nearly 10 years now. The idea of an iceberg is that it's filled with trivia that most people may or may not know, which gradually descends bringing forth more unknown trivia or facts. I made this iceberg myself and I did the best I could to put things that could be understood by someone who may or may not just be hearing about Hatsune Miku for the first time. Also goes without saying, I'm not perfect, so if any of the information I stayed on here is wrong, please let me know. Okay, long intro out of the way. I'm Roomwave, and I hope you enjoy the Hatsune Miku iceberg. Vocaloid. Vocaloid is a synthesizer used for making music. The big gimmick being that the software is sold alongside voice banks that can sing the lyrics for your songs. Hatsune Miku is one of those voice banks for the Vocaloid software, which is bought separately. She was developed by Krypton Future Media, released on August 31st, 2007. The woman who provided the sounds for her voice is Saki Fujita, a Japanese voice actress. At the time of this video, Miku can officially sing in Japanese, English, and Chinese. World is mine. Miku's most notable, if not her most famous song. Produced in lyrics by Ryo and released on May 31st, 2008, in it, Miku takes on the character of a spoiled girl who believes the entire world revolves around her, hence the title. This song has received many covers in numerous languages, and if you look on YouTube, the song has received millions of views. So, I don't know how to pronounce this producer's name very well, so you'll have to forgive me. So I'm gonna say this as best I can. <laughs> Anna Managuchi. This references the song Miku by Anna Managuchi, which was released in 2016. It's another popular Miku song which is in English. The song became a meme for its catchy lyrics and I quote, Miku, Miku, you can call me Miku. Blue hair, blue tie, hiding a Wi-Fi. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> Wee bait. Sad to say, but Hatsune Miku is Weeboo bait. Since all you really need to get into the Vocaloid fandom is some basic knowledge and to listen and watch some popular Vocaloid songs, it only makes sense that Weeps can easily get into it. Obviously, not all Miku fans are like this. My guess why Miku is Weebu Bay is maybe because of her bright colors, her similar design to Sailor Moon, and just being popular in general. But if you guys have any other reasons as to why, feel free to say in the comments. Leaks. Back in Vocaloid's early days, the Vocaloid community had something called the Item Wars, which was the fandom coming together to figure out a character's signature item. Most often, it would be a main item they just carry around or their favorite snack. As for Miku, the internet decided her main item should be a leek, also becoming her signature dish. However, the vegetable in question is actually a negi or a green onion. MMD, properly known as Miku Miku Dance, MMD is a 3D animation program created by fans for fans to create their own 3D music videos for Miku and other Vocaloids. Because it's very simple to download and import models into the software, MMD has been adapted for other online fandoms and has grown beyond its initial concept. You can often see people either making music videos or using MMD to create vines or TikToks but with MMD models. Vocaloid overall is still a software. Vocaloid just became a nickname for the voice banks from the Vocaloid software. So yeah, Miku is not the first, I repeat, not the first, this is a common misperception, and she is not the only Vocaloid. While Miku is the most famous Vocaloid without a doubt, there are other Vocaloids, and I'm not going to name them all since there's too many to list off. As the facts stand so, Miku is not the first Japanese Vocaloid as that title belongs to the Vocaloid Miko, and the first ever Vocaloid was Leon back in 2004, who sung in English. Iconic art. This refers to Miku's first ever box art, which he does this iconic pose. The art was drawn by Kei, and according to the Vocaloid Wiki, he said that when Krypton commissioned him, he was a little dumbstruck at first, because he didn't know what a Vocaloid exactly was or how to betray a singing computer. But he pulled through, as this image is now iconic to even some non Vocaloid fans, as this would be one of the first scenes to come up when you search Hatsune Miku online. Coachella. Miku was set to perform in Coachella 2020 but this never happened due to COVID-19. This is higher up in the iceberg as I feel like a lot of people actually know about this. Official YT. Hatsune Miku has an official YouTube channel that's YouTube certified. If you want more Miku stuff, you know where to go. Miku made Minecraft. Minecraft is a popular game reaching meme fame, and Miku is a popular character reaching meme fame. So it only makes sense if used together for jokes. The obvious joke being that Miku created insert thing here.
Project Diva slash modules. While Hatsune Miku has been featured in numerous games, her main game franchise is called Project Diva. Project Diva is a line of rhythm games which features songs created by fans and even includes songs sung by other Vocaloids that belong to Krypton. In the games, you can change the outfits of the characters, and those outfits are referred as modules. Like, not even costumes, they're just called modules. Yeah, I, that's why I included that, because they're just not referred to as costumes at all, and that's a, a, a little strange if you just learned about this. <laughs> Project Diva is made by Sega as well, the boys and gals who own Sonic. Oh hey, look at that, official Sonic Miku. Huh, Miku 39. 39 is Miku's number created by the fandom. The reason why being that it's a Japanese pun, because the number 3 is pronounced as Mi, and 9 is pronounced as Ku. So 39 equals Miku. An alternative is 3 being pronounced as San, and 9 is Q. So Sanku when you put them together, which sounds a lot like thank you. So whenever Miku fans is 39, they're either saying Miku with 39, or they're saying Miku, thank you. Domino's. Domino's Pizza once partnered with Miku for a campaign. This also has received meme fame, and I recommend watching Nick Robinson's video on it. He does a legendary job covering this topic in depth. Niku Niku Doga Niku Niku Doga is a Japanese video sharing site, and many iconic Hatsune Miku songs were first uploaded there first before being uploaded to YouTube. The site first launched in 2006, months before Miku's release in August of 2007. Magical Mirai slash Miku Expo Magical Mirai is the main Japanese live concert for Hatsune Miku. Another popular Miku concert is Miku Expo, in which Miku tours in various regions such as Europe, USA, Taiwan, and many more. Toyota Toyota has collaborated with Hatsune Miku for numerous commercials, which can be easily found on YouTube. The most notable one being where Miku meets this hot dog guy and... Yeah, I'm dead serious. Just watch. You wanna bacon wrap hot dog? Ooh, ooh, you wanna... Hatsune Miku? Hatsune Miku! Hatsune Miku! Hatsune Miku! Hatsune Miku! Sand Planet featuring Nicki Minaj. Sometime after the release of the song Sand Planet, which we'll be discussing later in this iceberg, a channel called Hatsune Miku Vivo tried to trick people into believing it was the official site for all Hatsune Miku related content. One of the ways they tried to do this was to clickbait people into believing that Hatsune Miku collaborated with Nicki Minaj by listing her name in the video's title. Eventually, this video was taken down alongside the Hatsune Miku Vivo channel. Sad to think that people really thought this happened though. But honestly, Nikki, if you really want to collaborate with Hatsune Miku, go for it. I mean, <laughs> race cars and racing Miku. There's a variety of official Hatsune Miku race cars, but not as well known is that every year there's a figure line of racing Miku to go along with the Super GT GT300 class series, dubbed the greatest motorsport race in Japan. Each year, Miku is given a new racing design, and this tradition has been done since 2008. Hi Miku, this is Scarlet. Taking advantage of Miku's very long hair, Hatsune Miku collaborated with Lux and Scarlett Johansson. And from this collaboration came a commercial where Scarlett Johansson says the iconic alliance. Hi Miku, this is Scarlett. As a result, Hi Miku, this is Scarlett became a meme as well. Lady Gaga Hatsune Miku performed at a Lady Gaga concert as the opening act back in 2014. The reactions of the crowd were very lackluster, <laughs> and you can find footage of this concert on YouTube if you want to watch it for yourself. Miku on Letterman. Oh my god, I've been waiting to talk about this. Okay, so I personally watched this performance on Letterman when it aired back in 2014. She came in during like the last five minutes of the episode, and honestly, Letterman's reaction was fantastic. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Hatsune Miku, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Okay. There she is. Same as with Gaga, you can find this performance on YouTube as well. Miku dating Crunchyroll. Crunchyroll is a website that's most notable for letting its users stream anime the day it airs in Japan. Maybe to some people's surprise, Crunchyroll has a mascot named Crunchyroll Hime. On August 1st, 2016, on the official Crunchyroll Twitter, this image was posted with the title, 
Hashtag happy National Girlfriend Day to my one and only. So, yep. Crunchyroll's dating Hatsune Miku. So this next layer is going to be about fan made characters based off Hatsune Miku, which have been adopted by the Vocally Phantom and Krypton, so buckle up. <laughs> Akita Neru is an officially recognized fan made character based off Hatsune Miku. According to the Vocally Wiki, in 2007, a Japanese TV station claimed all Miku fans were anime freaks without any stable work experience. And three days later, you were unable to find Hatsune Miku on any search engines in Japan. And then two days later, Miku's Wikipedia on Wikipedia Japan was deleted. Of course. Miku fans were freaking out, and a rumor came forward saying that an ad agency was trying to purge Miku and indie musicians. The people who denied these rumors were labeled puppets of the agency, and as a result, they made a spoof character named Akita Neru. The fandom's idea behind Neru's character is that she's a tsundere who dislikes otaku culture and Miku. Neru is employed as one of the puppets of this anti-Miku agency. On April 1st, 2008, Krypton adopted her as an official character and placed her in Project Diva, although she has no official voice bank to this day. Hachine Miku. Also based on Miku, Hachine was responsible for the start of the character item war. She is the character featured in the Yebum Poka video, wielding Miku's signature Negi. She also can be seen in the Project Diva openings. Yoene Haku. Yoene Haku is the representation of all Vocaloid songs that use Miku, but end up sounding awful. It said the creators of the songs would whine about how their work would not be getting noticed. Intentionally trying to make Miku sound as bad as the character Haku, they would try to give Miku a more deep, melancholy sounding voice, like these upset Vocaloid creators. To quote the Vocaloid Wiki even further, if someone succeeded in making a bad Vocaloid song in the process, then it was a success. On the opposite scale, if someone pitched Haku to sound good, then it contradicts Haku's status as a failure Miku. Haku was also constantly seen holding a bottle of sake to cope with their melancholy. Yikes. Miku Dayo. <laughs> Sorry. Miku Dayo. Miku Dayo was created by Sega based off the Nendoroid figures. She was made to promote the game Project Mirai, a spinoff for Project Diva. She's commonly portrayed having a bad personality and being downright creepy due to the eeriness of her design. And Krypton seems perfectly fine with this. And yet again, she can also be found in Project Diva with some hilarious results. <laughs> World is Mine sequel. Little do people know, World is Mine actually has a sequel. It's called I'll Teach You, and I'll post a link right in the description if you guys want to listen to it. And yes, it is a bop like the original. Popey Po Real Drink. Family Mart, a convenience store in Japan, took inspiration from the drink in the vocally song Popey Po and actually made it into a real drink. If any of you watching this have actually had this drink, feel free to write your opinions in the comments of how it tasted because I'm actually really curious to know. Miku's mic stops working. At Kodo 18, maybe it's K-O-D-O 18, um, either one. Okay. Miku's mic stops working. It's kind of self-explanatory. I'm putting this on the iceberg because of Miku's expression as she's kind of looking around a little bit scared of what to do. This is the only time this has happened at a Miku concert, best of my knowledge. However, people in the comments point out that Miku only pretended to have her mic broken. As the transition to the song Viva Happy, which starts with the Ah ah, Miku okay, as if when she was checking to see if her microphone was still working. So whether or not her microphone actually broke, or if she was really good about to sing Viva Happy, that's up to you. Yvonne Poka. It's another famous Miku song, however it is not a Miku original. It's actually from Poland, that was actually from the 1930s, which regained popularity in the Finnish band Lotima. So yeah, it's not a Miku original, and it's not from Japan. <laughs> Miku's crying speech. Ten years later after Miku's release at Magical Mirai 2017, Miku gave a speech thanking her fans for helping her reach her popularity. This has become a hot topic among Vocaloid fans in the Hudson and Miku community, due to Miku crying during the speech. Thank you. 
Hatsune Miku is married. In Japan, there is a man, and forgive me if I pronounce his name wrong, but his name is pronounced Akihito Kondo, and he is actually married to Hatsune Miku with a proper wedding with 39 guests to be exact. There are actually quite many similar virtual character weddings in Japan where people can pay so they can marry their favorite desired 2D character. From the SCMP article, it says that he thought he would never marry or find a partner, but he found Miku was the one and began to fall for her. He knows Miku isn't real, but he states, I love and I see her as a real woman. Miku's concept. According to the Vocally Wiki, when creating the concept of Miku as a character, she is described as an android diva in the near future where songs are lost. I personally put this lower down the iceberg due to how post-apocalyptic this sounds. Miku forgets the saying in Project Diva X. Project Diva X is part of the Project Diva series, released in 2016. This is a Project Diva game that tried to give <laughs> plot, and they did this without giving anyone in the game a strong character for reasons I'll discuss later in this iceberg. This is a subversion of the last topic on the iceberg, as in the plot, Miku and her friends forget how to sing, and it's up to the player to help them remember. Due to the restrictions of the game's character in the short song list, this game wasn't well received by fans, but was much liked by critics according to Google. And I give points to Sega and Krypton for trying. Miku Anti-COVID-19 Hatsune Miku is officially anti-COVID-19 and is now a spokesperson to help prevent the disease. Due to Miku's popularity, this was an incredibly smart move in order to help prevent the further spread of the disease, or at least more awareness. Okay, uh, so let's talk about Shite Yano. This... This is Shite Yano. She is another fan-made character based off Hatsune Miku and is especially recognized by Krypton. Instead of having pigtails, Miku's pigtails were turned into her feet and just... God, look at her! She is listed as a deformed mascot, which are parodies or exaggerated representations of certain vocaloids. She is... Canon Nightmare Fuel. Miku Design Formula. This is a conspiracy that all Vocaloid designs coming after Miku will try to take inspiration for her, akin to the idea that Miku's design is a recipe for success. In reality though, Miku has certainly set the aesthetic for Vocaloids, even some ones not belonging to Krypton Future Media. The Vocaloid aesthetic is anime based, with an emphasis on futuristic style clothing that incorporates elements of machines, computers, and instruments. Real Robot Miku Ever wonder what a realistic looking Miku would look like if she ever performed with a real robot body and a realistic looking face? <laughs> Again, this footage was uploaded in 2010 on YouTube. Again, only three years after Miku's release. That's how popular she was. I put this low on the iceberg because one, real robot Miku, and two, with this quality Miku's somewhat eerie appearance, yeah, this is this is creepy. This this is creepy, but she she kinda a little bit adorable in a weird way. I can only wonder where this robot is now ten years later. Sand Planet. Sand Planet was composed by Hachi, real name Kenshi Yanizu. You might know him for composing and singing the second opening of My Hero Academia. Yes, I'm dead serious. Hachi before becoming a solo artist wrote Vocaloid songs, and he made his Vocaloid return in 2017, the tenth year of Hatsune Miku. The song he wrote was Sand Planet, and it's lower on the Vocaloid iceberg for what the song symbolizes. Sand Planet symbolized the death of what the Vocaloid community used to be, for when it was fresh and new. Everyone being excited as more and more popular iconic songs came out, which eventually stopped and it's no longer as popular as it once was. Hachi wrote in this comment about the song that, The environment encircling Vocaloid has certainly changed a fair bit since I was in it, while reminiscing the Vocaloid landscape that I saw, and the castles we had built in the sandbox. In seeking the perfect balance between nostalgic feelings and new feelings, there was a sand planet. There are those who believe the song to be the funeral song for the Vocaloid fandom, but like I said, it symbolizes what Vocaloid used to be in the beginning. It's not the death song for everything in Vocaloid. In Japan, Miku is massively popular and new songs are being produced and uploaded every day. It's just that many new songs aren't being subbed in English as much as they once were. In fact, there are many bunch of English producers and more people than ever here in the West that are creating content. So if you want to get back into Vocaloid, you definitely should try. Because content's out there, you just gotta go find it. If you're embarrassed about being a Miku fan or even a Vocaloid fan in general, don't be. Embrace the things you love. If you love something, Assuming it's not illegal, <laughs> you should be able to like it and be proud of that.
Kaoneka, certainly the most creepy version of Miku to date. Created by Danino, the character is called Ka, whose cosplay is Miku. And when cosplaying, that's when they are called Kaone Ka. Kaone has been featured in Vocaloid videos and even has her own official figure. We support you, Ka! Keep cosplaying. Everything is canon. So this kind of goes back to what I said earlier in the iceberg, so that might now start making sense. <laughs> in order to have songs not be restricted in their subject matter, Miku has officially no personality or anything officially said in canon. Why is this? Well, for example, if Miku has a Sami personality like in World is Mine, she wouldn't exactly be singing a song about world peace. <laughs> Krypton laid out the groundwork for Miku to be whatever you wanted her to be, and thus everything is canon. This gateway has led to numerous headcanons for Miku's personality and numerous amounts of creativity. That's one of the things I love about this fandom. Want Miku to have a sword? Boom, canon. Want Miku to have a pet Pomeranian named Pookie? Boom, canon. All you need to do is write a song about it and have Miku sing it, and then boom, it's canon. However, if you want holy approval for your head cannons, you gotta have Krypton agree to it, of course. <laughs> this can be seen when Krypton approved of all those fan-made characters, Green Negi, and of course, Vegetable Juice. Okay, so now we're gonna get into some more... Yeah, territory. So let's talk about Cool Son Miku. This issue is more prevalent in the early 2000s and early 10s, but it has gotten better. It has gotten better. Hatsune Miku is a voice bank for the Vocaloid software. She is not real. She does not, and I repeat, she does not write her own songs. Vocally songs are made by real people. Producers like Ryo, who Real World is Mine, stopped using vocally voice banks to sing their own songs due to how their work was being overshadowed by the vocally singing them. Long story short, don't be a jerk and give vocally songwriters and artists their proper credit. Also, no stealing from the creator if they don't want their work re-uploaded. Does Hatsune Miku have an anime? So, this is originally a meme back from the early Vocaloid fandom. When someone ever saw Hatsune Miku and noticed she was an anime character, they would ask where she was from. Where is this anime girl from? Vocaloid. Is Vocaloid an anime? <laughs> this question was so common when the Vocaloid community and the Hatsune Miku fandom. Hence, it's meme status. Well, guess what, guys? February 2021, it was announced that Miku would be getting her own anime. So, does Hatsune Miku have an anime? Yes. Yes, she does. Kind of. We'll see in a few years. You better believe we're gonna be reviewing that. Oh my god. So this is definitely the most meta thing on the iceberg. Pia Pro Studio and Miku NT. Krypton Vigrin Media announced that going forward, Miku and other voice banks created by Krypton will not be featured on the Vocaloid software anymore. Krypton made their own software called Pia Pro Studio. So yeah, Hudson and Miku technically isn't even a Vocaloid anymore. Wow, this video has been in the making for a very long time. So before you click off this video, this is 100% a labor of love and Miku 39. For anyone who wanted a more darker Miku iceberg, I don't know what to tell you. I mean, Miku herself is pretty wholesome based off everything here. It gets kind of dark, but not too dark. I mean, I don't know. As for other Vocaloids though, it gets really, really, really dark. I mean, we're talking about crime, d music scandals. I mean, like it gets really, really crazy. If you want to see another Vocaloid iceberg, more than just Miku, definitely check out for the one by Mineni. At least I, I, at least I believe that's how you pronounce your name. Please forgive me, girl. Please, please forgive me. Okay, and they even talk about some of the things that are recorded on the list. But definitely go check out her thing. Like I don't know this person, but she's been like a great help for spreading Vocaloid love among the fandom and other people who don't know about what Vocaloid is. I mean, absolutely great. Go check it out. Link in the description. So if anyone wants me to do a follow up or have any corrections, just list them in the comments below. I'll be reading those. I hope this encouraged some people to check out Hatsune Miku more. I don't know. <laughs> so anyways, thank you all for watching. I'm Rimwave, and much love.